we go. I feel good. I feel good now. Gosh, I feel good. All right, what are we doing today? We made the argument Wednesday last show that the left goes through great lengths with terrorist attacks to ignore the real threat and blame us. The blaming us is really simple. It's the whole, well, you know, it was irresponsible to print those cartoons of Muhammad in the first place. We shouldn't have antagonized great religion. Meanwhile, by the way, do you know it's not in the Quran that you can't draw Muhammad? That's a modern made up construction. There are a ton of paintings and depictions of Muhammad in museums all around the world, including New York, LA, Washington DC, the Smithsonian has four paintings of Mohammed. There's paintings in Vienna and Scotland and London and all, all over the place. So that's not even a real thing. That's just all done to, to blame us as if uh, the attacks are our fault. Now, the uh, fact that the left ignores the real threat, that's easy to prove also. Check out this New York Times article. This is the original paragraph right here. See it up on your screen. Take note of the part where the terrorist came up to the woman, pointed his gun at her and said, I'm not gonna kill you because you're a woman. We don't kill women, but you must convert to Islam read the Quran and cover yourself. So that was the original article in the New York Times. Later the same day, that article, those paragraphs were changed to this. Oh, that's, that's the same, no, the, no change. Oh, it's below the, why can't, is it, here, let me move the couch. Oh, yeah, that's the part they changed. As you can see, the New York Times took out the whole, you must convert to Islam, you must read the Quran, you must cover yourself, you must cover your face. They took out all that stuff. In other words, the New York Times edited out the entire reason why the terrorists did this. Why would they do that? Because this leaves us with the impression that, you know, these aren't such bad guys after all. I mean, look, they don't kill women. I heard this line from the great Mark Stein yesterday and I had no idea what he was talking about. Here, listen. Many of those are themselves the children of first cousins. If you had said to people, when, when mass immigration to the West uh, from, uh, from, uh, from the Muslim world started uh, 40, 50 years ago, if you had said that in the early 21st century in an English industrial town, a majority of the children in uh, your grade school class would be the children of first cousins, People that would have thought you were stark staring mad right. even to say that. Right. Uh, and I think that, I think we are entitled. I think we are entitled to say that that is simply culturally incompatible uh, with a, uh, a free, advanced, developed society. Here's the story. In England, 50% of British Pakistanis, so Muslims from Pakistan in England now, 50% marry their own first cousins. Pakistanis make up 3% of the births in England, but 33% of the birth defects. There are entire hospital wards full of children, from babies to teenagers, who can't talk and who are fed through feeding tubes. Entire schools are dedicated to, to children with neurological disabilities. One family has six kids, all of them with the same disability, and none of them are gonna make it to adulthood. Why is this happening? This occurs because if you marry your first cousin, all of your property and money stay in the family. It's an old Muslim medieval practice going on in modern England. This is one woman quoted in the Daily Mail. So here's this woman, I'm married to my first cousin. My parents and my husband's parents were also married to their first cousin. Now I have one daughter with lots of defects and the doctor's sure it's due to these marriages. So why did this woman marry her first cousin? Because their families forced them. Absolutely incredible. This is the result of multiculturalism. It's okay to stand up as a British person or as an American and say, our culture, you know, the one that says you can't marry your first cousin is better than yours. We have to stop falling victim to the disease of multiculturalism. Otherwise, stuff like this is gonna continue. Our feel good story of the day is Owen and Hatchie. We don't have enough time to play the whole video, but please, um, particularly if you've ever had a dog that you love. You have to watch this whole video. It's about 10 minutes long, but you won't regret it. And I promise you, you will ball like a baby. It's in the description right now. Please click it this very second. If you don't click that right now, then you have to click either this for last week's episode or right here to listen to our daily radio show where we break down a lot more of what we talked about here. And, uh, or you can click right here and download our Liberty Tree app for your smartphone absolutely for free. And for good measure, here's some more pictures of Mohammed. Ah!